took 10 years and we more or less know what graphene is and its basic property. Now the race is to utilize properties of this material and find how these uh, properties can be used for something good. So now the race is not to learn more about fundamental properties, but try to bring this material closer to the industry. But having said that, although we know a lot about graphene, it has so many systems and cousins, other one atom or one molecule thick materials, which are were discovered only a few years ago. So we are, our hands are full. When we say graphene, we actually mean all these hundreds of different materials which we were not aware that they can even exist five, ten years ago. Yes, graphene, if you strictly speaking, is more or less studied, but with so many similar materials, our hands are so full to study it for the next uh, many, many years. During the last uh, three, five years, there was a tremendous pro progress in making large-scale production of the material. Now, around the world, people produce hundreds of tons material per year, and it can be scaled further up. The same people can produce material on a plastic roll-to-roll -roll production in square kilometers, and people try already uh, industrial production for, say, touch screens for mobile phone with high quality graphene, or people these days put this graphene into uh, paint, into tire manufacturing, into the batteries. It's already there, and uh, uh, quality can always be improved, but uh, uh, the material, the industrial production is no longer a problem. It can be produced as much as we need. <music> quality of graphene research in Brazil is very high quality. I wouldn't put it within the top five countries in the world, but it's uh, really not uh, in the second dozen. It's, uh, it's really, I'm not sure about. I heard that uh, Brazilian research in general is sometimes uh, uh, graded not very high within 50, but in terms of material science related to graphene research, it's extremely high quality research coming out of several universities in this country. It's a multifaceted problem. If you don't want to become uh, similar to underdeveloped countries like in Africa where they focus on agriculture, you have to invest in new technology. First thing, the second thing, you have to invest in uh, nurturing new gen generation of engineers and scientists and academics. So this Graphene Center has this mission, okay, because we now maybe not 100% sure, but 99.9% .9 sure that this material and group of the materials which we call graphene with all other similar materials will be around uh, for 30-50 years. We will continue to study this material, we continue to use material, we continue to bring this material to industry. So this is a long-term investment into first a place where to study this material. And secondly, and maybe similarly important, is a touch point, the only center on graphene in the whole country. This is where industry will tend to come and ask questions and get their answers. And equally important that there will be many, many students and PhD students who learn about this side of material science and will get this knowledge and bring this knowledge to industry, maybe not to this particular area, but more generally to material science and materials industry. A little bit not modest, our group is still one of the leading uh, research groups in the world, although I'm gradually drifting away from this research. I'm, I'm trying to find new areas because for me 
fundamental scientist. I know more or less everything what I want to know. I try to find new materials, new properties and so on. So UK, a uh, few places in the UK are internationally uh, high, few places in uh, uh, un uh, United States produce very high quality research. Singapore is uh, very good in, in graphene research. Several places in China are after many years of poor research and poor quality of research, China is coming very strongly and then probably Brazil is somewhere uh, beyond this uh, uh, few countries which I mentioned leading the research. Yeah.